What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. This video is about suspension geometry and its kinematics. In this video, you will learn degree of freedom and kinematics of suspension geometry, instant center and instant axis, jacking and roll center, camber change rate and scrub of wheel. So without spending much time, let's start now. So when we talk about the suspension geometry, it means a broad subject of how the unsprung mass of vehicle is connected to sprung mass. These connections not only dictate the path of relative motion, they also control the forces that are transmitted between them. Note, any particular geometry must be designed to meet the needs of particular vehicle for which it is to be applied. There is no single best geometry. For any body moving in space relative to the another body, its motion can be completely defined by the three components of linear motion and three components of rotational motion. A single body is said to have the six degree of freedom of motion in three-dimensional world. For an independent suspension, the assembly of control arms is intended to control the wheel's motion relative to the car body in the single prescribed path. That path may have the camber gain, caster change and toe change as prescribed by the designer, but it still follows the one path as it moves up and down. In engineering terms, we could say the wheel has a fixed path of motion relative to car body. It is not allowed to move fore and aft or laterally relative to this path. Note, in the front suspension, we do have the steer rotation degree of freedom, but only when it is demanded by the steering system. Another way to say the same thing is that the suspension provides the phi degree of restraint, that is, it severely limits the motion in phi direction. So the study of independent suspension geometry is to determine how to restrain the knuckle to limited motion in phi direction. Phi degree of restraint requires exactly phi tension and compression links. This is how a simple tension and compression link looks like. Similarly, you can see an A arm is really equivalent to the two straight links with the outer ends coming together at the ball joint. And a McPherson strut is kinematically a slider mechanism which is equals to an A arm that is infinitely long at right angles to the slider travel. So now, if you see a double wishbone geometry, here we are having two A arm which is equals to four link and one tie rod that is equals to one link. So in total, we are having five links. Similarly, in McPherson strut, we are having one strut which is equals to 2 link, 1 A arm that is equals to 2 link and 1 tie rod which is equals to 1 link. So in total, we are having 5 links. Hence, we want 5 tension and compression links for constraining 5 motion of wheel to achieve the single path or 1 degree of freedom model. Note, in geometries like double wishbone and McPherson strut, we only have the tension and compression forces on the links, which means you can make them very light and thin according to the later forces. Still, there are some suspension geometries having less than 5 links. These suspensions generally include the bending forces. For example, a semi-trailing arm rear suspension. You can see there is only one arm that does the job of 5 links. But in this case, the link should be enough strong to sustain the bending and torsion forces of 3 direction of rotation. Now let's see what is instant center and instant axis. As the name suggests, instant means at particular position of linkage and center means the pivot point of linkage at particular instant. Here you can see we are having the front view of double wishbone geometry. And if we extend the upper and lower A arm, then we will get a pivot point about which the linkages will move at particular instant. And this pivot point is called the instant center. So when the tire moves up and down, it leads to a deflection of linkages which will effectively change the instant center. Hence, while designing the suspension geometry, we need to understand how fast and in what direction the instant center changes with the suspension travel. In suspension design, it is convenient to break down the three-dimensional view of assembly into two dimensions. So in the front view, on making the projection from the linkages, we will get the instant center and this instant center will define the roll center, scrub motion, camber change and data required for studying the steering characteristics. Similarly, in the side view, on projecting the linkages mounting points, we will get the instant center which defines the wheel fore and aft path anti dive and anti squat geometries and caster change. Let the instant center in the front view be IC1 and in the side view be IC2. On joining IC1 and IC2, we will get an axis called instant axis. This line is taken as an instant axis of motion of knuckle relative to car body. Another important term in the suspension geometry is jacking. For understanding jacking, we need to understand the roll center height. So I explained in my earlier video of roll steer that if we extend the line from the center of tire ground contact patch, till the instant center for both left and right tires, then the point where these two lines intersect is called the roll center. And the height of this point from the ground is called the roll center height. The position of roll center with respect to center of gravity and ground affects the handling behavior of car. Basically, roll center is the force coupling point between sprung and unsprung mass of vehicle. 
Suppose you are taking a right turn. The car will experience a centrifugal force Fc at center of gravity towards left direction and this force will create a movement about the roll center. If we decrease the distance between the roll center and center of gravity, it will lead to the decrease in roll movement because the movement is given by Fc multiplied by Z2. Effectively, the rolling will reduce. So, if we decrease the distance between the Cg and the roll center to greater extent, will it be good? No. As you can see on decreasing the distance, we decrease the roll of vehicle, but we are increasing the distance between the roll center and ground. It will lead to the unsuitable effect called jacking. Here you can see the car front suspension geometry, the left tire having the instant center IC1 and the right tire is having IC2. Now when car takes a right turn, the tire will experience a lateral force Fy in this direction. This lateral force will produce a movement about the instant center which will make the tire to roll. On left tire as the movement is applied at IC1, due to lateral force this movement will push the upper link of suspension outward with the force F1 and push the lower link inward with the force F2. If we resolve these forces into components, we will get the net vertical force Fz. This force will lift the sprung mass and it is called the jacking force. This can also be understood in another way. If while cornering, the tire rolls like this, then the lateral force is acted at some angle with the ground, which will have the vertical component of force called jacking force. Jacking force is considered unsuitable because it lifts the sprung mass, which will lift the center of gravity, effectively increasing the roll movement. But in the cases like bottom out, in which the suspension reaches its full limit of compression, jacking force helps to lift the car and prevents the car from bottoming out. So while designing a suspension geometry, the roll center should be kept near to the center of gravity and also near to the ground to avoid the excessive jacking force. Before understanding the camber change rate, you should know what is front view swing arm. Here in this geometry, you can see this is the instant center IC. Blue line from the contact patch to the instant center is called the front view swing arm. The distance of IC from the tire center contact patch is called the FVSA length and the height of IC is called the FVSA height. The roll center of vehicle depends upon the FVSA height and the FVSA length, but the camber change rate depends only upon the FVSA length. Basically, camber gain is the difference of camber angle after certain amount of suspension travel. If you replace the control arms of suspension with a single link that ran from the knuckle to the instant center, the amount of camber change achieved for per inch of ride travel will be given by tan inverse of 1 divided by FVSA length. So if FVSA length is short, there will be large camber change rate and if FVSA length is long, then there will be small camber change rate. Another front view variable is scrub. Scrub is the lateral motion of wheel relative to ground that results from the vertical motion of wheel. Scrub is the function of length of control arms and the position of instant center. If the instant center is above the ground and it is inboard, the tire will move outward or scrub out as it jumps. If the instant center is below the ground level and inboard, the tire will move inward or scrub in during jumps. There will be minimum scrub when the instant center is located on the ground. Note. The scrub changes the slip angle due to lateral scrubbing of tire. So this is all about the front view of suspension geometry. If you want to know about the suspension geometry analysis in the side view, you can check my videos on anti-dive, caster and anti-squat geometries. So this much for this video. If you have any queries regarding the video, you can comment in the comment box. Do like the video. If you find the video useful, do share it. Also subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. If you want to check my blogs on vehicle dynamics, automobiles and software, you can check on my website, the link is in the description box. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.